my name is Ondra Macháček and I will present you, uh, I will talk you about Ansible modules for the overt, but I will be talking more in general so you can use it also for other projects which are using the REST API. Uh, so first of all I will tell you something about the overt. Um, it's an open source uh, management for virtualization. It's uh, using a KVM uh, on its hypervisors. It's a very major project at 10 years already. And the overt supports multiple storage types like NFS, iSCSI, and OpenStack storages. Uh, as you can see, we support block storages, also file-based storages. It's uh, we support many features like uh, live migration, etc. And uh, in the, this, you can manage in the web UI or via the REST API. And we also support multiple SDKs, which are automatically generated. And we also wanted to add uh, support for Ansible, which is quite uh, used these days. So uh, we implemented it as well. Um, uh, to see how our REST API works, uh, you can take a look on the left. Uh, it's same for most of the projects which are using the REST API. You usually have some resource, and if you want to create a new new entity for that resource, you just send a POST request uh, with the either XML or JSON, whatever you prefer. Uh, then you can also update via the put. Uh, HTTP method or delete the resource via the delete uh, HTTP method and you can also uh, change some complex state of that entity. In this case there's example of starting virtual machine uh, which can take like other multiple par uh, multiple parameters like uh, if, should, if it should use a cloud in it or um, what uh, device it should boot from if it should be a CD or hard disk drive, etc. So this is kind of a complex complex action, which is uh, kind of hard to hard to manage. Um, on the right side, you can see the implementation of uh, of our SDK. It's pretty simple. It's just a wrapper around those those HTTP calls. So if your project has some some similar SDK, uh, you can pretty simple. Uh, create Ansible module for, for your project. Um, now let me tell you something about Ansible, if you don't know that. Uh, it's a configuration management tool, uh, sometimes called orchestration tool, deployment tool, etc. Simply you can, you can for, for example, provision a VM on Azure or on, I don't know, some, some cloud, cloud provider and then deploy, for example, Apache and deploy your application there in a simple declarative way. The important thing about Ansible is that it's simple and uh, you can learn it very quickly and also read it very, very quickly. As you will see in a few moments, you don't need to know <coughs> what it is and you, will, you can read the code pretty simple. Uh, Ansible works in a, in a push model, which means that you have a your notebook, which is usually called a control node, actually, you have you can have a different machine where you where you execute that playbook, and this playbook is copied to the uh, manage nodes, or it could be even one machine, it could be more machine, whatever you prefer, and this code is executed on those manage nodes. This is known as uh, agentless tool because uh, Ansible is using SSH. For, to copy the scripts to the manage node from the control node. Um, in order to to define the script you want to you want to use to manage your infrastructure, uh, this is called a playbook and it's using a YAML, so it's simple to read. And in this in this YAML file, you just define uh, your infrastructure as a data. So you actually only define in one simple script your whole infrastructure. So you don't have to do any manual changes, you just uh, maintain your, your one simple script or it's a bit co it could be a bit complex if it's for whole infrastructure, but you just maintain that script. So I have here a 
example of how this display box works. So as you can see, we just create a simple simple YAML file, and at the end, we need to define where where this playbook is uh, executed. In this example, it's a localhost machine, and we're using a local connection, so we don't have to use uh, SSH if it's just a local machine. Then another important element of the playbook is the tasks. The tasks means what all the what all things should be executed on that machine. Um, you should always name it properly because you will see it in the output, and uh, it will document what the what the playbook is doing. In this example, we will we use a file module, which just uh, create the directory um, with a specific permissions. In this case, seven five five. So. To really understand what it does is, so you can see if you execute it with a simple, simple, simple command, simple playbook, you will see the output where it was executed. This is not important; it just fetches the fax from that machine, and then this says that it uh, created that that directory. If we check that, you can see that it was indeed created with that permissions we we wanted. If you execute that playbook, you can see that nothing was changed because it's as we want that. If we change manually the permissions and execute the playbook, you will see that Ansible will handle and it will change the permissions back. Yeah, that's it. So this is known as. Uh, uh, this is known as a declarative, the declarative way, which is the way you need to implement all the Ansible modules. If you don't follow this pattern, your modules do, won't be uh, accepted to the upstream Ansible. The other important thing about the module, if you will implement it, is that it must be idempotent, which means that if you if you execute the playbook uh, or your module one time, and then it will set the set the set the status of the system, and then you execute it again and again. It must be still in the same state as it was when you executed it the first time. Uh, those modules are imp uh, the whole Ansible is implemented in uh, Python, and most of the modules are are implemented in Python as well. But other languages can be used, so it depends on you. But 100% is, is implemented in Python. Uh, if you, uh, in this case, what I will be talking about is actually implementing uh, modules for some some REST API resources. In in this case of the over project, it was virtual machines, clusters, disks of the virtual machines, etc. Uh, you should always handle the specific resource of your REST API in a specific Ansible module if you want to. For example, manage some some more complex stuff like uh, virtual machine and its disk and its snapshots. You should you should uh, split it into the multiple modules and then you should you should glue that into the roles which will handle some complex tasks. So so if you want to implement the modules for your for your uh, REST API, uh, usually you have many resources, many entities. Those entities has many attributes, so there is a a lot of things you have to do, which you don't want to, because it's a lot of code to write. So what we what we wanted to do is to auto-generate it as as we do our SDKs. But the problem is, as you can see on the left, um, is that uh, this is really imperative and not a declarative phase. As you can see, we use an action, and for that action, we have some parameters. And it just creates a VM, and we don't we don't know if it's created or not. We just we just uh, get the status if if it was created or not. But uh, we don't wait to be actually created that VM. We need to do it in the another task, and uh, it's a normal polling for the status of the VM. And this is actually if you take a look at it, and if you write a Python code, it would be very same and it doesn't bring any any real advantage 
and also this would not be accepted to the to the ansible upstream code because every module must must be idempotent and declarative so we have to write it manually in a declarative way and the advantage of it is that it looks the same as all other modules in the in the current upstream ansible and the disadvantage is that it's really hard to maintain because you need to write a lot of code which is which is very same in all places so so it might be very hard now uh, if you have imperative sdk and you want to do a declarative uh, you need to think how to do it basically it's very simple because if you for example have a virtual machine and you want to start it then you need to wait for the operation to be to be done uh, in this case uh, it's uh, usually mapping from uh, start action to running action for example or if it's a create operation then you just need to change it to present so it's usually oper action plus some waiting operation the problem is that uh, rest api different rest api uh, behaves differently if you do different actions so uh, for example some rest apis could return you a link to the job reference for example or some queue reference and where you can pull the status of the of the of that action so and different different actions can return you just a element to that entity and you need to pull that specific element for that status some different actions doesn't have to return you anything so you need to for example pull some events in the in the database or or other stuff so you need to you need to know your rest pi very well so you can implement all the entities in the correct way and it doesn't have to be always a generic uh, another way which you have to do in order to implement correctly the module is the is to make it impotent so that means that you should not do some action if it's not needed if you take a look into the ansible at any ansible module which is, which usually manage some some project like openstack azure aws etc uh, you will see code like this it's very simple if the entity should be there you check if it's there if it's not you create it and wait to be created if it's there and it needs to be updated then you just update it and if it doesn't need update you just send you just say everything is okay same for the absent actions uh, the most complex code is actually a uh, neat update because usually Ansible is using flat structure which means that for example you define a cluster for the VM where it should be located but uh, you usually need to construct much more complex uh, entity XML entity or JSON entity to specify the cluster it could have many more attributes you, you need to pass so this is the most hardest part from the to create that so now i will show you uh, how how powerful this very simple code can be uh, I, I have here a very very simple very simple playbook with just a create data center we have some resource API slash data centers and we created a module which is really really simple it just do there is just this code very simple code and now I will show you how how powerful that code that simple code is as you can see here I have here my data center called my data center and if I executed the playbook it says it's okay nothing was changed and 
the data center is there. But if I remove it manually and I will execute that playbook, it will create the playbook will create it for me the data center. And I have here some specification how the data center should look like. For example, if it should be local, the description. And if I change that um, to something different. And I will execute that playbook with check and diff mode. Uh, you will see that the Ansible will tell me that that the data center. Oh, sorry. I Uh, it will tell me that the data center was changed in the system and before the description was the uh, it is uh, like it, should, it, will look, it looks like this and it should look like this but it didn't change it because I said just check the system and don't do any changes if I will remove the check parameter uh, it will change that system and it's in the state I want it to be defined. So this is uh, really powerful. With just few lines of Python code, you have a really powerful automation automation engine. And uh, the most the the other important use case is that if you if you know what affinity is, for example, then you define uh, with affinity labels. You can define. For example, which virtual machines should be run on which hosts. Uh, for example, if that host has some specific hardware uh, which where only specific VMs can use, uh, you can you can use those affinities. So if you start that VM, it will always be started on the host. So with this simple playbook, you can always uh, manage how the how the target infrastructure should look like. So. In this example, we have specified that uh, VM, my VM, should be always placed on my host. And if we execute that, uh, this this uh, is created. And now, if some administrator which which change this change that manually in the system. Uh, which you should not because you should tell those people that you should always manage your infrastructure in a playbook and in manage it so no one manage it in manually so if for example he will add another VM to that host like this and you can for example create a cron job which will run this this uh, command every night and you can see that some uh, some different administrator uh, add a new VM to that to that system manually so you tell him that he should not do it but she should always change the playbook you have and define that infrastructure as a data so this is a powerful tool with just a few lines of code and I think that's all I wanted to show you. So I have here just a few links if you want to take a look at the implementation uh, of the Ansible or if you want to check the Ansible, how are those modules implemented, you will see that it's really simple. And that's all.